Is the Coco and Eve hair repairing leave-in treatment a dupe for K18? If you're new here, hi, my name is Serena. I'm a bioengineer and trichologist in training who breaks down the science of hair care so you can learn more about your hair and the products you use. Coco and Eve just released a new hair repairing leave-in treatment that has a very familiar peptide. This peptide is called the SH oligopeptide 78, which is the same peptide that K18 uses to repair your hair at a molecular level. Or is it the same peptide? We're gonna find out, but first we're gonna test to see which product is better. And then we're gonna break down the science of the peptide to see if these peptides are actually the same, or if someone might be stealing something. Now let's go try them. Here we have the K18 bottle, and here we have the Coco and Eve bottle. Both of these bottles are actually the same size. The Coco and Eve bottle is actually pretty cute. Both of these bottles require you to shampoo, towel dry your hair, and then leave on the product. K18 is for four minutes, and Coco Eve is five minutes. And then after that process is over, you're then able to style with your normal styling products. The instructions for both treatments are very similar. You can tell that the Coco and Eve directions, like they purposely, it's almost like they were looking at the K18 directions to make sure that they weren't doing it word for word. And this is actually pretty significant when it comes to creating products because whenever you have like an industry leader or starter, um, a bunch of other products come out with similar, if not the same technology as like the original, like think of Olaplex and all the other bonding products that came out since Olaplex. K18 is like the Olaplex of molecular repair. Both of my cats actually came into the bathroom while I was filming and this is Daisy, she's a kitten. And this is my two year old cat, Yoshi. And with that, let's go. For my routine, I have to exfoliate first because I have dandruff, so we're starting out with the DPQ Detox. When I use detoxes on my scalp, I like to use a scalp scrubber because it allows me to spread the product and massage it into my scalp. It's really important whenever you're using a scalp scrubber that you're as gentle as possible. Then we're gonna go in with the Verb Dandruff Shampoo, which has salicylic acid. Salicylic acid exfoliates your scalp, helping to remove dead skin cells, reduce flaking, and even controls your sebum level. Sebum is a waxy oily substance made by your skin to protect your skin, and when you have an excess of it, it actually can feed the dandruff you have, causing the dandruff to worsen, which is why it's so important to shampoo your hair. And then follow up with Nizerol, which is an antifungal. This is my favorite antifungal shampoo. Now we're out of the shower, and I'm just drying off my hair a little bit so that it's all towel dried and we can apply the products. And then on towel dried hair, we're gonna apply K18 on this side and then Coco and Eve on this side. First, I'm applying the Coco and Eve. It says to start off with one pump and then go from there. I don't think that's gonna be enough for me. You can see the texture here. I think it might be a little finer than K18, but we'll do a side by side comparison. Okay, I'm starting from the end and going up. I ran about, I ran out a little bit. I ran out of product a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna do another pump. The pumps are kind of inconsistent. So I actually ended up pumping like I think four times. Um, just in that last pump. And I applied the Coco and Eve first because it's five minutes until you can start styling your hair. So you have to wait five minutes for the treatment. Now we're gonna go in with the K18 side. This is actually a brand new bottle. The pumps are usually pretty consistent when it comes to K18 and this is the product texture so I can do the side of the side. And it's a little bit thicker than the Coco and Eve uh, leave-in treatment. And applying from the ends to my root. These smell very different as well. I think I like the smell of the K18 a bit more than I do the Coco and Eve. Now we wait four minutes. This, this side has already been sitting for a little bit because we applied it first and I did that on purpose because Coco and Eve, you have to wait five minutes for the treatment, whereas K18, you have to wait four minutes. Then we're gonna re-wet my hair. And I'm misting my hair right now because when you have curly hair, the best way to style your hair is whenever it's soaking wet. And because we towel dried my hair earlier, it's no longer soaking wet. It makes it better and easier to form like curl clumps, which makes like makes better curls. Some people at this step, whenever they use K18, they'll actually go back in the shower and condition their hair. Um, but I didn't really want to do that. I think that I can just get away with just styling because that's what I usually do when I use K18. Um, 
because for me, like re going back in and finishing my hair, it would get my hair wet again, but it's a lot more work because I had to get dressed and stuff. <laughs> And apply the Fenty Home Curl Cream and then the Fenty Heat Protectant and then follow up with the Curl Smith Curl Talk Gel. Now we're going in with the Home Curl Cream from Fenty. I love this cream. I love the texture of this cream and there's not actually a lot of creams I like um, but this one's actually just really good. It's really rich but it doesn't it's light enough that it doesn't like weigh down my hair. I can see already that this side is not as tangled as this side, but that has nothing to do with the mask. That was just the condition of my hair. And then we're going to go in with the heat protectant because I will be diffusing my hair and it's always important to use heat protectant because um, it helps distribute the heat in your hair so that the heat isn't like focused in one area and um, you don't end up getting heat damage. Well, you don't get at if you're using the tool correctly, you won't get, end up getting heat damage. And now we're gonna start with the tangling. I have a tangle teaser, that's what I like to use. And we're just gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. It's important to be really gentle with your hair whenever it's wet because that's when your hair is the most fragile. And with straight hair, it's actually better, better to tangle your hair when it's dry. And then for curly hair, it's actually better to tangle your hair whenever it's wet. Because whenever you detangle straight hair when it's wet, it actually ends up causing more damage. And then if you detangle curly hair when it's dry, it actually causes more damage. This knot is actually a little crazy. I can see already that I need to apply more water. Now we're going to detangle the K18 side. Next, we're going to apply the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk Gel to both sides. Uh, whenever you're styling your hair, especially if you have curly hair, this should be the sound that your hair makes. Like that's how wet your hair should be whenever you're applying products. Okay, now I'm going to do the other side. I need a little more gel than that. And I actually just got a Dyson recently, so we're gonna finish up with the Dyson and then compare the sides. My hair is now dry and in a gel cast because I dried it with my Dyson, and now we're gonna go in with the Olaplex number no. seven. This is actually one of my favorite hair oils to use whenever I'm getting rid of a cast. And we're just gonna clap it out. I'm gonna add a little more oil for the other side. I actually think that both sides look really good, but as far as product texture, K18 is a bit better. And for the smell of the product, I think K18 is better. But if you're looking for a cheaper dupe of K18, Coco and Eve actually might be a good option. To confirm this, let's actually look into the science. Now that we tried the products, let's check the facts. Molecular repair products work by being small enough to go through your cuticle to your cortex where your keratin chains are stored. And when they find broken keratin chains, they're able to fix them. This is important because in the past, products with protein in them didn't repair your hair in the same way these do. They actually coated the outside layer of your hair called the cuticle. Because over time, your cuticle can form cracks and breaks. And these proteins were able to come in and fill in those cracks and breaks. Some of them were small enough to go a little bit deeper, but they weren't to the same extent as molecular repair products. Plus, proteins only coated your hair temporarily. So your hair would be temporarily strengthened, but it wouldn't offer the same long-term repair as molecular repair products do. Now for the K18 peptide, the INCI name is called SH oligopeptide 78. And INCI means International Nomenclature Cosmetic Ingredient. And it's basically a name given to ingredients so that you can read them on product labels. Because otherwise you would have names like Beauty Roll Spermum Parky Butter instead of Shea Butter on your labels. Which is not only a little bit harder to pronounce, but it can be a little bit harder to identify. So when we look at a name like SH oligopeptide 78, it actually might mean something else, and it does. And let's break it down a little bit. The SH in a name means synthetically 
human or bioengineered ingredient. Which makes sense because molecular repair peptides were created to mimic the keratin in your hair, which makes it synthetically human. And it's also why K18 describes their peptide as biomimetic, or that it mimics life, because it mimics the keratin in your hair. The ogliopeptide means that it's a short chain peptide, or a protein fragment, which means that it's a chain of amino acids linked by peptide bonds. So it's a bunch of amino acids that are linked together. And the 78 just means that it's an amino acid sequence. Or it just means that the amino acids are arranged in a certain way. And you don't really need to know the sequence of the amino acids unless you're the chemist or the brand itself. So bringing that all together, SH oligopeptide 78 just means that it's a short peptide that mimics the keratin in your hair. To really get down to the peptides in these products, I actually looked at K18's patent. I'm not a patent lawyer, so here's what I found. K18's patent is for the use of a peptide that has a sequence of length of 6 to 12 amino acids, where two of the five amino acids are cysteines for the treatment. What does that mean? Amino acids are the building blocks for protein. And K18's peptide ranges from 6 to 12 amino acids, so it's 6 to 12 amino acids long. And they can have anywhere from two to five cysteines. Cysteines are actually really important for your hair because they contain an atom called sulfur. If you ever heard of disulfide bonds and oilplex, you know that disulfide bonds impact the shape, structure, and strength of your hair. But they're also the strongest bonds, which means that they're the hardest bonds to break, but also repair. And K18's peptide has anywhere from two to five cysteines. I know for sure that K18 can repair disulfide bonds, and I think that might be why. Knowing all of that information, I went to a website where a lot of laboratories and manufacturers and brands get their cosmetic ingredients. And I searched for SH oligopeptide 78, and I found one listing. I think this might be the same ingredient that Coco and Eve is using in their product. And it's called iPeptide 78, and it's in the process of being trademarked or is already trademarked. Then this is the technical data sheet, which is kind of the sheet that brands and chemists look at when they're deciding on choosing what ingredients to put in a product. And from the technical data sheet, it says that that iPeptide 78 is a synthetic recombinant peptide composed of 20 amino acids and mimics the segment of type 2 keratin, a structural a crucial structural protein found in skin, hair, and nails, known for providing strength, resistance to mechanical stress, and maintaining structural integrity. This biomimetic peptide specifically targets damaged hair by reconnecting keratin poly polypeptide chains, forming strong disulfide bonds akin to those found naturally in hair. And what does that sound like? It sounds like the K18 peptide. So what does all of this mean? First is that this peptide is small enough to go through your hair and reach the keratin chains in your hair and actually mimic the keratin chains in your hair. It also means that iPeptide can have the INCI name SH oligopeptide 78. And it's because it's a small peptide that mimics the keratin in your hair. And the second thing is that it's actually slightly larger than K18's peptide. Their peptide is 20 amino acids long, whereas K18's is 16 to 12 amino acids. And I think because the peptide is longer, it doesn't infringe on K18's trademark. Well, I think it doesn't. I actually don't know because I'm an engineer, not an attorney. So Coco and Eve definitely have a molecular repair product that repairs the keratin chains in your hair like K18 does. And I think the results of the product is pretty good, although I do prefer the texture and smell of K18. But as far as product performance, it's actually pretty good, and I think it might be considered a dupe. I want to thank you so much for joining me on this breakdown and review, and please make sure you like and subscribe because it helps me create more videos like this. And make sure you comment which side you think is better. As always, I love to learn with you, and I can't wait to see what we do next.